this is yet another video where I'm analyzing the first image that was used to make uh, a backroom's creepypasta. Except I'm not. Someone else did a video analyzing this and they got in contact with somebody who gave them information we've never heard of before. And it severely narrows down a bunch of things, including changing the most likely location for this image to Japan. So let's move forward. Um, I can't communicate with the person that did the video that I'm critiquing and getting the information from, so let me introduce you to this individual. This is a, 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 a montage of screenshot information, and there's the URL for his video. At the 20 minute and 20 second mark, Pedro Cultus did a photo forensics image scan and analysis of the backroom's image. But the thing is, he had one that he was sent that included metadata, meaning it could include maybe the GPS or the actual camera or the actual year. Spoiler alert, it was 2002. Now, in previous videos, I've explained that the most likely time range is from the year 2001 to 2008, broadest range, and the narrowest range is 2002, excuse me, 2001 to 2003. The reason being that the majority of cameras that could have taken this image, again, we didn't have metadata, we just had some data, um, narrowed it down to that range more likely. <clears throat> in fact, the absolute majority of them were available in 2003, but yeah, here we go. Um, anyway, he was sent the image by somebody who wouldn't tell him where the image was taken from, but said they knew. Yeah, we've all heard this kind of story. And the individual wouldn't give him any more information other than the image. But the image included metadata. Now, I'm going to warn you, anybody could download the image and stick in metadata. I'm not kidding. It alters the image. It changes a bunch of stuff. It alters photo forensics way of noting it. But... It's not that hard to fake something like that. But let's assume it wasn't faked, or at least I don't want to assume Pedro Coltis faked it and did a fake video. So anyway, why would we look at this information? Well, when metadata it gets beyond a certain point of information, there's a lot more data, and if it's consistent between each other, then it proves that it's probably true. Now, someone could have been an expert opinion kind of person and done a really good job faking it. Okay, that's true. However, let's analyze the consistency. But anyway, all shout, shout outs to uh, Pedro Coltis for doing this. The rest of the video after that little page that you're seeing there, he went through and looked through all of the cameras. Well, I did. I tried to do a duplicate of his work. So I'm going to show you what I did. First of all, I want to point out that he did not include, this is a copy of his description, any links to the file or the analysis page. However, as you can see right here is the URL. Now this is a funny thing. Photo forensics, when you have it analyze an image, it keeps a copy of it. And as long as you have this URL data, you can bring back the original image. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, the other thing about this, again, is that his source that gave him the image seemed to indicate that he was from one country or another, and that's where the language broke down. I don't know what if anybody knows the language that uh, Pedro Coltis is speaking, please go watch the video. In fact, I insist you watch it. It's an excellent analysis and, 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 and rabbit holing. But I can't understand all the stuff he's saying, and the Google Translate screwed up. So let's move on. This is a archived, non-live copy of Photo Forensics looking at it. And right here it says, Ampherstand show equal digest. At the bottom of every one of these pages, there's a direct link that links to this part of the page. And it says here that it's a 640 by 480 image, 68.7 uh, kbytes, 68.8 kbytes, 68 that sort of thing. And then it gives you the MD5 uh, hash code, and it gives you the SHA1 hash, which is how it identifies the page name. That's how it does it. So that means if you upload an image that hash is exactly the same, It'll just say, yeah, 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 we've seen that before. But right here it says the file was analyzed on that date. Now, this is important. This is about a month before Pedro uploaded. That means he recorded, he, he, when he was recording himself doing the same thing I'm doing here, that's the time he did it. That means it's very strongly indicating he did this. Now, anyway, that's the digest, and I archived it. Let's go here. I archived the ELA, which is the thing that people look for to see if there's any hinky stuff going on. Okay. 
<clears throat> and I want to point out, this may have actually been altered. I'll tell you why in a minute. This is the hidden pixels. There aren't any. The analysis says there's no embedded color profile. However, there is an embedded thumbnail. It's 5K bytes, which is strongly indicative of a camera making the image, not photoshopping. Here's the JPEG data. It just says it's at 90% quality. And here's the metadata. This is the money shot. Now, as we scroll through this, it says it's definitively a Sony CyberShot only. And it said it was from 2002, June 12th at 8 in the morning. And I have contended that this is an image someone took of them putting in carpet because the only thing in this image that's new is the carpeting. This is a carpet installer. That's what I said. That's not what a source is saying. Anyway, the exposure time is 1 30th of a second. It had an ISO of 190. XF version says 0210. That means it's a 2.1 version of how it stores this information. All of the timings match up, which means it wasn't edited after the fact, so anything that happened in the camera had to be sequenced through. It also says the focal length is, at that moment, 6 millimeters approximately. Okay, that usually means it's a smaller, you know, lens. And the other things are, um, well, that's about it. It has an aperture of 2.8 and f-stop or, or aperture, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's useful information. So remember the time and date stamp. It's six months after the beginning of 2002, and it's ISO, it's XF version 2.1. That's what that means. Now we move forward. Here's the raw data, so you can sift through the, I don't even know how many bytes that is. And then we go here, and that last one, if you're not aware, when you click the source button, you can get the full image, and we view image, and it looks just like all the other copies that are good and clean from like 2018. It might be cleaner. This one is from 2002, according to the metadata. But again, a digital copy, if you do it right, has no alterations. There may be some differences. The image you're looking at is literally the image he had. And I know that because I stupidly re-uploaded the image after downloading it, trying to trick the thing into saying it was something wrong with it. I changed the uh, the uh, the title of the, of the picture and sent it up. It still said it was the same thing. In fact, it told me I'd send it up uh, four times because I did. <laughs> so let's uh, let's continue. Now, we're looking for a 0.3 megapixel or 0.3 MP Sony CyberShot. It was set to 6.1 millimeter focal length or whatever. It was 190 ISO and the XF version is 210 or 2.1. And it has to be a 640 by 480 camera that would have been available in 2002. And the picture had this XF data thing. So. We have our time range of from 1997 to 1998, or 1998 on that month. That's a narrow range for it being 2, so what about 2.1? Well, 2.1 was available from 1998 to 2002, February, or April. Now, that might seem like there's something screwy going on here, but there's a good reason to look at this. The camera could have been purchased sometime before 2002 and taken a photo years later. This uh, this format here doesn't, you know, the, the this EXIF version doesn't contradict the time and date stamp it was made. Now, let's look at this. The only three Sony CyberShot cameras that I could find that had a 0.3 megapixel imager or thereabouts were all made in 1996 and 1997. One of them is a mini disc based one, but it used a 3.5 megapixel imager. And when I downloaded test images, it definitively identified it as that, not a 0.3 megapixel. So that's out. <clears throat> now we get the 1996 DSC F1 and F3. F3 had a sepia mode you could add, and you could make it less or more sepia. You know that yellow tint you see in the picture? Yeah. Now, the last part of this. Well, here's the problem. These were almost exclusively marketed in Japan, which is one of the few places besides the United States and North America that has all the characteristics in the image. It's just a long shot that it would ever be a photo from Japan. Yeah. So anyway, um, it, using 2.1, a.k.a. 1998 to 2002 format, 
means that this was one of the later model ones with an upgraded set of chips in it. That's all. Or not. And this is what the person would have seen when they were taking the camera photo. This one has the camera pointed because it's on a swivel straight up in the air, so you'd lean forward and take your photo like an old-style camera, or you could flip it forward. And this would have been what the cameraman saw when he was taking this picture. And yes, I really did blow it up so I could fit it in there. That's what the Cybershot DSC F3 and F1 looked mostly like. I obviously just made it an F3 just because I could. This is actually something I added. So, let's review. Um, Pedro Coltis found this information. He was sent it. The source may be lying to him. I doubt that Pedro Coltis is lying, but he could be. The information is completely consistent. Well, mostly completely consistent. And now it brings up a problem. This makes it go from being almost 99% North America and part of South America pictures, because it's just more area, to now being 50-50 between this image being taken in the United States or Japan, and it's leaning more towards it being a Japanese-only image. I'm not kidding. That's literally what happened. I wasn't expecting that. I don't even think Pedro came to that conclusion. And if Pedro's watching, there's only three cameras that would do exactly all these characteristics, and they were made just in the range of time for it to be accurately this. By that point, every other camera had switched over to 2.2 for the metadata and stuff. Except, no, it could still be there. It, it, they were available. They were still in use. The camera just simply had to be made that year or before. And yeah, 1998... They could have just done an update. They could have just done a firmware update to the cameras, which is probably what happened. Anyway, he may not have known that anybody would be able to get that URL and reuse it to reproduce his results. Now, this is the other thing. I don't believe Pedro Coltis is lying or faking it because by doing this and not really paying attention to, you know, retaining it, he proved that he did it about a month before he uploaded his video. That means I, I'm fairly sure he's genuine, and maybe his data source is, and again, this may have been made in Japan, and it may have been made on one of the first digital cameras Sony put out, and most importantly, it there's only three of them, and really, only one of them is the highest likelihood, and that's the, uh, the third generation version. And yeah, it had a mode to take a normal image and make it sepia like that, and that'd be a very Japanese thing to do. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. That's all I can offer. Bye.